What's up guys, Luis here and welcome back to the channel. And on today's video, I'm gonna be giving you guys five tips that I wish I had when I first started investing in real estate. Before we get started, go ahead and hit the like button. I'm a new channel. I'm trying to get some sort of growth here. So every like is gonna help. So the first tip that I'm gonna give you guys is not one that necessarily relates to real estate, but it is gonna be one that I think is really important and that's understanding your why. So why exactly do you want to invest in real estate? Is it for the time freedom? Is it because you're trying to get your time back? Are you trying to work less? Are you trying to work more? Are you trying to just like increase your net worth or are you trying to increase your cash flow? You need to understand your why in order to understand which strategy is best gonna help you. So for example, me specifically, I'm more interested in buying my time back. I just had a little boy and I want to spend as much time as I can with him. And obviously having a job isn't exactly gonna allow that. So my personal goal is to create enough passive income from real estate to cover my monthly expenses, whether it be my rent, you know, living, just regular living expenses so that I can kind of pursue my other dreams and goals and not necessarily retire. I just want to make sure that my bottom line is covered from real estate. And then at that point I can continue investing in real estate, but I won't be worried about how my expenses the next month are going to be covered. Just make sure you understand your why, because your why is really going to determine the best real estate strategy for you. So tip number two is going to be essentially that you need to figure out what the best real estate strategy is for you. There are a ton of different real estate strategies out there. Just to name a few, you can get into multifamily, you can get into rentals, you can do fix and flip, you can wholesale properties, you can do the burr strategy, your job is essentially to find out which strategy is going to help you the best. So for example, if you're going to want your time back and you want to spend it with your family, you're probably going to want to get into rentals, whether it be single family home, multifamily, you're going to want to get into the buy and hold game because that's just going to create more passive income for you. But if your goals are more to increase your net worth, you're probably going to want to do fix and flips, wholesales. So just make sure that you know which real estate strategy is going to help you the most. So for tip number three, so for tip number three is going to be pretty simple. It's going to be get your finances in order. Make sure you're in a position to invest before you start investing. You don't want to start investing in real estate if, for example, you have high interest debt whether it be a personal loan, a car loan, anything like that. You want to make sure that all that is paid off. You need to try to pay off all this debt before you actually start investing in real estate. And that's only going to help you because it's going to reduce your debt to income. So it'll be easier to qualify for loans. On top of paying off your high interest debt, you want to make sure that you have an emergency fund. You want to make sure you have an emergency fund because no investment is 100% safe. There's always going to be risk and there definitely is risk in real estate investing. You can have tenants not pay rent. You can have tenants trash your place and you have to, you know, fix it, renovate it. You want to make sure you're safe in case anything happens. So tip number four. So tip number four is going to be figure out exactly how much property you can afford. And this is going to tie back to tip number three a little bit, because if you, for example, do not pay off that car loan, that personal loan, anything like that, you're going to qualify for a smaller loan on an investment property if you qualify at all, depending on your debt to income ratio. So how exactly do you do that? So you're going to want to find a lender, whether it be a mortgage broker, or a bank, they're going to go over your income with you and see exactly how big of a loan you qualify for as far as investment property. They're going to let you know how much money you need to put down in order to get a good rate on an investment loan. You're going to want to start taking care of your credit score now. So you're going to want to make sure you're making all your payments on time. You want to make sure that your credit utilization is low. So for example, if you have a $10,000 credit card, you want to make sure you're only using 1000 of those dollars because that'll put you at a 10% utilization utilization for that credit card. So you want to make sure your overall credit card utilization is under 10%. So you have again, $100,000, you want to use 10,000, you don't want to use more than 30% of your credit card utilization, that'll negatively affect your credit score. And as a first time investor, these lenders are going to be a lot more picky with you. If you do have again, high interest debt, if you have late payments, if you have anything that's bad on your credit score, they're go it's going to affect you a lot more. So make sure that you take care of your credit score now because it's gonna play a huge part in your first investment loan. So for the last tip, tip number five, this is a huge one for me and it's something that I wish I would have done. And this tip is to hire professional help. When I first started, I thought I could learn everything off of YouTube. YouTube University it is, just me in my office alone watching hours and hours of video, which I hope you're doing now. I hope you're still here, thank you, stay tuned. I'm going to get better at this talking into a camera thing. So what are the best ways to hire professional help? So one way is not necessarily hiring, it's finding a mentor. So a lot of people, real estate investing is their full-time career. So if you put in, the, put in the effort, you find somebody in your local area that's already doing real estate investing, you try to have them mentor you. you don't, I wouldn't suggest going and asking them to be your mentor. I think the best way from what I've been told is go and offer some sort of value to them. If you have to work for them for free, then work for them for free. What they're gonna teach you is gonna be huge compared to that time that you spent with them for free. It's something that I wish I would've 
done. I never actually did it, but I know a couple people who did that working for free to them was definitely worth everything that they learned. So if you don't feel comfortable actually going out and seeking some help like in person, another thing you can do, which is what I'm doing now is join a mastermind. I think this is a huge help. So a mastermind essentially is a group of people that come together and they talk and they just share their ideas weekly or biweekly. Nowadays, a lot of masterminds are via Zoom. So in my mastermind, there's people from all over the country and twice a week we get on a Zoom call and there's people of all different experiences on there. So we have guys with 50 units for rent and we have guys that don't even have their first deal yet. It's a great place for you to go and ask your questions and it's a great place for you to go and network and, and potentially find deals. There's a lot of deals that happen within our mastermind now, guys partnering up. I definitely think it's a huge advantage as opposed to trying to learn everything on your own. For example, comparing it to going to the gym and getting in shape. You can go to the gym and get in shape and sure you can do it on your own. You can do it on your own and you'll get there eventually. But if you hired a personal trainer, you're going to get there a lot faster than if you just try to go and learn everything on your own. So essentially that's what you're doing with either finding a mentor or joining a mastermind. You're getting that help in order to grow faster. So if you don't want to do either of those two things, I would definitely suggest reading a book. There's a ton of real estate books out there. And in a weird way, when you read a book, it's it's kind of like the author is in a way mentoring you because he's he's literally giving you what he learned and what he knows about real estate via text. Some of my favorite real estate books were obviously I made a video on it. Rich Dad Poor Dad is a great first book to read. It's not a whole lot about real estate, but it definitely ties it into there. And it just kind of shows you the power of real estate and what real estate can do. The second book would be, I really like the 10 X rule by Grant Cardone. And another classic book would be the millionaire real estate investor. So there's just three books. I've read other real estate books. So I'll link those down in the description. So if you don't want to find a mentor and you don't want to join a mastermind, you should definitely just pick up a book and and read it and just start absorbing all this real estate knowledge because it's it's a little overwhelming at first but then you just start to get so into it and you just start to want to read more and more and more so those are my five tips for new real estate investors and tips that i wish i would have had when i first started so with that being said you guys already know quit the slacking make it happen thanks for staying until the end of the video guys and catch you guys next time